What's up YouTube, my name is Brett Westwood and today we are going to go over resend. So if you've ever wanted to find a way on how you can send emails inside of React or Next.js to your potential customers or website visitors, this is the video for you. So resend is email for developers. This allows us to reach humans instead of the spam folders. And every time I've done a test inside of resend, it has always reached my inbox folder. This is probably the newest kit on the block when it comes to sending emails, but it gives you a modern look as well, as you could tell by the landing page. Everything is very simple to integrate, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up Resend and how you could get it running on your Next.js application. So before we get started, if you could hit the like button and also subscribe for more content just like this, I would greatly appreciate that. Other than that, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna show you Resend in action. So I'm on brettwestwood.dev, which is my personal website portfolio, and I have a contact form at the bottom. As you can see, it has a name, phone number, email, subject, and message input field. Whenever we click the send message button, we are going to send an email to this email right here that is in the input and we are gonna get a notification using the toast notifications here at the bottom right saying if it was successful or not. This is going to send an email to this potential person that wants to get in contact with me and so they know they actually sent the email. So let's click send message. And as you can see, hey Brett, your message was sent successfully. And then we could tell this by either check in our inbox. So if I click here, as you can see, I just got a new email zero minutes ago with some content here. And then also if you go inside of your recent account, you could refresh the emails tab page right here. And you can see we just delivered a message to this email from this email. And it was sent at this time and delivered at this time. And it shows you exactly what the email looks like. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up in your project or website so you guys could get up and running with emails sent to your clients or prospects. Okay, so we're gonna start from the very beginning. So you're gonna be on resend.com forward slash home. You're gonna land on a page that looks similar to this. And then we are going to get started. So you could either create an account with the email and password or sign up with GitHub. I'm gonna sign up with my GitHub because I already have an account associated with GitHub. You're gonna land on a page that looks like this. It's an overview page. You're gonna have zero emails if this is your first time. And then we are going to go to the docs and we're gonna go step by step on how you should set up Resend so you could get up and running. So in the docs, they give us a quick start for a few frameworks that we could use. You could use Python, Express, Node.js, PHP, Ruby, Rails, and then we're gonna use Next.js quick start. So the first two things you should do before step one is you should create an API key and then you also need to verify your domain. So I am going to show you guys how to do that. So to create an API key, you are going to go back to your overview page like this. It's gonna look like this. And on the left side, we have API keys. You're gonna click that and click create API key. You're not gonna have any here. So we're gonna create a new API key. You can name it whatever you want. You're gonna give it full access as the permission. And then you could keep the domain as all domains because if you're on the free tier, which most people are, you're only gonna to have to be access to one domain. So then you're just gonna click add and then your domain is gonna pop up here with your certain API key that you should copy over to your ENV file. So after you have your API key done, you need to verify your domain. So to verify the domain, you are going to land on the overview page as well and then click domains. Like I said, you can only have one domain and you click add domain. Your domain should not have www. It should just be your domain.com. As you can see here, brettwestwood.dev, not www.brettwestwood.dev. So you're gonna type in your domain, your region, I'm on the East Coast, and then you click add. And then after you add it, you need to click into it, and then your status is not gonna be verified. You're gonna have to verify your domain by updating your DNS records. So to do that, it gives you three different names and values that you need to add to your DNS records on wherever you're hosting your site. I'm hosting my site on Vercel. I recommend hosting on Vercel too if you're using the Next.js framework. 
So I'm gonna go over to Vercel real quick and show you where to add these three values here. So to do that, you go to Vercel.com, then you go to your projects where you push them, which mine is personal portfolio. Then we are going to go to settings, and then inside of settings, we are going to go to domains. We're gonna click edit on your domain name, and then we are going to view the DNS records and more for the website. And then underneath DNS records, you could add names, types, value, TTL, and priority, and then click add. You're gonna add those three values you get from resend into your DNS records here. They will populate right here. As you can see, I'm gonna blur all of my values out and names for security reasons, but after you add them, they should pop up right here. So after adding the DNS records, you're gonna click submit, or there's a certain button that says um, verify domain, whatever the button says, you click it. It should be here at the top right. And then after your status is verified, you can use this domain. So that means we have set up the API key and the domain. Then now we're gonna follow the steps. So for us, we are using the node package manager. So we're gonna install the package resend by saying npm install resend, which I have already done. I don't have to show you how to do that. Just copy this, paste it in your terminal and you're good to go. Next, we are gonna create the email template. This is the code that shows up on the actual email. So this is actually creating the email with code. So all this email says is welcome and then the first name, whatever the first name is passed through, through the props and it's H1. So you wanna put this in the components folder and then you wanna have a file name email-template.tsx. So after this, we have to send the email using React. So we're gonna create an API file under either pages forward slash API forward slash send if you're using the pages, but if you're using the app router, then you're gonna do in the API folder, then forward slash send, and then inside of a route.ts file. So I'm using the app router, which I recommend everybody does. It's stable, it's not an experiment anymore. And as you can see here, this code, you could pretty much copy and paste it. That's how simple it is to set up this resend onto your application. So I'm gonna show you the code real quick and go over it, and then I'm gonna show you it on my actual coding software. So as you can see, we're importing the email template. That is step two. And that is from the components folder. That is the actual email we're sending. Next, we need to import next response so we can send a response to our servers. And then after that, we must import the package we installed, which is resend. We must import resend. So those are the three imports at the top. Then we must initialize resend by saying, naming a variable resend, equaling it to a new resend, and we're passing in the API key. So this should be an environment variable, and that's the API key we created a few minutes ago. Now it's gonna be a post request, not a get request, not a put request, but a post request. So this post request, we have an async function post, and we're gonna have a try catch block. So we are gonna have a data variable, and we are going to await, and then we're using this method that resend allows us to use, it's resend.emails.send. It is sending an email from, so the first property we have to announce is the from. So what email are we sending it from? So you just can't use any old email. So this is a thing I was stuck on and I'm gonna explain real quick. So whatever your domain name is, like mine is brettwestwood.dev, you must use something like info at brettwestwood.dev. You cannot use a random email. It must be the domain that you have verified. It must be from that domain. Even if you don't create the email, you don't have to create this email. You could just name it whatever you want and it would actually just send from that email. So even if I haven't created info at brettwestwood.dev, I could still use it inside of this category. So make sure you use your actual domain here as well. So now inside of the two category, you're usually not gonna have a hard-coded email here. You're gonna have a dynamic email that you're getting from the request.json from that form. So here, we're gonna. this is the where we're gonna send the email to. So which email? The subject is gonna be obviously the subject line that they're gonna get in the email. You could hard-code this, whatever you want. 
and then React, which is going to pass in the email template and then any properties we wanna pass in. And then what we're returning, if it's successful, is some JSON of this data variable. And then obviously we have a catch and it's just going to return JSON with the error message as well. So now it says try it for yourself. You, you can see some examples, but I'm gonna show you what I did for mine because that's the point of this video. Okay, so my code, I am inside of a contact file, which is inside of my components. And this is the component that shows the contact form, so all the UI. And we are using some state to get the name, the email, the phone, the subject, and the message. These are all the inputs that you saw at the very beginning of the video that was on my website. And what we're doing here is we are using the Fetch Web API, sending a post request to this specific endpoint here, which is forward slash API forward slash send. And we are just passing the data to this endpoint right here. So this endpoint is inside my API folder and it's also inside the folder of send. So if we click that, this is where that copy and paste code should go that I showed you. And obviously there's a few things I added to make it work in my favor and on my website. So at the top, as you can see, we imported the email template, the next response and the resend. We initialized resend. And then what we did here is I wanted to get all that data from that contact component and I stored it inside of a body variable by awaiting the request.json. I console log the body just to make sure I'm getting all the data passed back to this endpoint. And then after I verify that, I destructure the email, the name, the message, the phone, and the subject, and the body. I am not using all of these variables right now, which isn't a big deal, but at least I'm passing it to the backend. And then after I do this, we are initializing data. And like I said, we have to say where it's coming from, what email. And you could put your name here or you don't have to put it here. Then you put the greater than or less than signs and I put brett at brettwestwood.dev. Like I said, I have never created this email of brett at brettwestwood.dev, but it allows you to use this since you need it to have your domain name in the from line right here. After that, we are sending it to the email. And we are getting the email, like I said, from the request.json and then I destructure it. So whatever email they type in, that is who we're sending it to. You could put the subject line, whatever you want. And then this React property right here, you must pass in the email template. And then you could pass any properties you want. So like the first name, and I just put the name. So whatever name they enter on the input, it's gonna be the first name. And then if I go to this email template component, which is right here, I am getting the first name and then just saying welcome, whatever the first name is. And then after we have this, you can put if the data dot status is successful, then you could just return a JSON if you want of message of email successfully sent. That's not necessary. I'm just doing that just so I can see it in the JSON data on the front end. And then we are going to go back to the contact form up here. And what I did was after if I get a response dot status of 200, that means if the response was successful, I am going to set the data, which is all of my forms back to nothing, an empty object. And then I am running a success message called toast.success. We're using the template literals and we're saying, hey, whatever the name is, your message was sent successfully. And to do this, I am going to show you how to use the toast package real quick. Cause I know that's not what the video is, but I feel like having notification when somebody submits a email request is very crucial when it comes to the UI. So you're gonna open up your terminal. You're just gonna say npm install react dash hot dash toast. You're gonna click enter. You could go to your package JSON and inside of the package JSON, you should see a react dash hot dash toast package version 2.4.1 or you might have a later version. After you do that, you are going to have to go into your layout.js. You must import toaster from react-hot-toast, and this is going to allow you to apply to all of your application. You're gonna to put toaster as a self-closing element inside of the body tag, and you can put the position to whatever position you want. 
And then the toast options, I just have the duration as 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. And then inside of the contact, you must import toast like this at the top. And after we initialize toaster inside of the layout, we could use toast inside of any file we want. And then all you have to do to use toast is say toast.success, toast.error, toast.message. You can look at the docs and the docs are very, very simple to use for toast. And toast.success just shows a success message and then you just type in your message as the parameter and prop. So that is how you do it. That is how you can create a form like this inside of the code and then actually send an email using resend emails. So if you have any questions about any of this, leave a comment down below or you can actually send an email to me or join the Discord as well. I have the link in the description and I'll be able to answer questions quicker if you do join the Discord. But other than that, if you found any value out of this video, I hope you can hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this.